Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. In the continuous effort uh, from our side to understand the nitty-gritties of Apache Spark and prepare for the Spark interview questions, uh, today we have brought in a very interesting concept uh, and this concept is, is uh, the concept of bucketing in Spark SQL. Uh, bucketing is one of the performance optimization technique uh, which can be leveraged uh, to avoid the shuffles in the entire Spark ecosystem and could be very handy in terms of optimizing uh, the performance of the joins and uh, uh, if it is used effectively it can um, it can brought in a considerable amount of uh, you know uh, performance enhancements uh, especially in a scenario where a particular data frame or table is kind of uh, is kind of reused very heavily because first time when you'll try to write uh, that table or data into the bucket table you know when you'll apply the bucket for the first time there will be some additional uh, you know uh, time would be taken to kind of uh, sh sort that data and shuffle, shuffle that data into different buckets but post that uh, if you'll try to use those tables into the joins and into other aggregations uh, it will result in no shuffling at all so you can save a lot of time uh, uh, that your exchanges and your shuffling will not come into the picture. So guys, uh, let's start this video. And before I start, I would quickly like to request uh, all my viewers and subscribers uh, do like, comment and share these videos. Uh, your comments and feedback is uh, highly invaluable to us. And uh, uh, keep learning and keep watching our videos. So guys, let's start. So specifically talking about Spark SQL bucketing, it's an optimization technique. <coughs> it's an optimization technique where we further distribute or categorize the data into buckets using any specific bucketing columns under specific partitions. So you already have that uh, layer of partitioning on data. So data is already partitioned into different, different uh, you know, uh, folders based on your partition columns, uh, keys and values. Uh, you can further categorize or distribute that data into different buckets within partitions. So it will, uh, this entire optimization technique of bucketing is kind of helps that how the data partitioning or data would be arranged onto the deck, onto the disk eventually. And uh, when you when you write uh, the data into the bucketed table, that is already kind of sorted and shuffled based on that bucket column. So if, if those uh, particular tables are involved in any sort of join, so it will result in uh, not at all any shuffling of data. And uh, so the whole idea of, uh, of this performance optimization is can we kind of uh, perform uh, the joins in such a way that we can minimize or avoid the shuffle altogether. And at the same time, if you'll have uh, minimal shuffle or exchanges, so that will also result in you know fewer or minimal stage, stages so each stage is, is kind of a complete life cycle in itself so fewer stages means you're gaining on the performance that's one quick thing I want to highlight that eventually say if you already have n number of partitions and on top of that you create say another m number of buckets so eventually the number of files that you will see uh, would be created the part files for your uh, bucketed table would be n cross m and we'll just quickly verify it from the spark ui as well but this would be handy you understand you already have a data which say has eight partitions and then you further add in uh, a bucketing and you said i want to categorize data further into four buckets each so your number of eventual files would be eight cross four obviously the additional files of your underscore success underscore commit etc would be there but your data files would be n cross m so let's try to uh, understand it from this scenario. This, this, this first one, if we'll talk about, is is the, is the normal table, right? We're trying to write into this normal table, normal hype table, and uh, the the different files are created based on the number of partitions that you have for that particular table. So here we have ten partitions. The data is arranged into ten partitions. Now, if you'll we'll try to write the same data into a bucketed table, right? Here you see that. <coughs> The data would be arranged into different buckets based on that bucket column ID, 
which is the ID and the shuffle of the data will happen across so that the data for the same ID will fall under the same bucket and based on the number of buckets that you are trying to create uh, you know uh, data for different keys will will come into into the same buckets but if you see here uh, data for the same IDs you know is going into the same buckets so all your data would already be shuffled and um, as well pre 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 sorted as well at the time of the write itself so when you'll try to read the data from the bucketed table uh, it doesn't need to shuffle the data further in case of operations like joins yeah I, if if you try to understand it that write phenomena or insert into that bucket hive table from the query plan perspective so yes uh, compared to a normal table there would be two more uh, uh, stages in between one would be your shuffle exchange which will try to cut uh, the data or sh try to shuffle the data across uh, different buckets uh, based on the number of buckets provided and the bucketed column and further uh, the data would be sorted within those buckets right so that will be a difference in terms of writing to a normal query normal table versus a bucket table and if we try to understand it from uh, this stuff so you will have that <coughs> scan happening here then your uh, this shuffle or exchange stage will come which you'll try to shuffle the data within its own buckets and then when you'll try to write it write it into the hype table eventually the sorting of the data within the buckets would be performed right now let's try to understand it from uh, the from the actual demo and how does it happen so if you see my notebook here out uh, I've tried to create two two data frames two tables uh, one with the uh, you know 10k records another one would be 1 million records and <coughs> by default the bucketing is enabled I'm just trying to assert it one more time right and this auto broadcast join I have uh, disabled so that it should not get into a broadcast join that the system should not convert into a broadcast join and if you see idly there are two there are two data frames or so tables involved in in this particular join which are both bigger in size so it's an idle or a potential candidate for a sort merge join right uh, we discussed in one of the previous videos all the different joints in the spark world so what we are doing there is we have cut out two data frames for these two tables that we have same these are play tables we haven't applied bucketing and we try to apply a join on top of that and if I run this particular uh, join query and try to look at the query plan this is how a query plan looks for this particular command so I have two tables which are red and if you see the number of files are red because the number of partitions are 8 <coughs> we'll check it again so 8 files are red for each of those two tables and then exchange stages come has come in between exchange means data shuffling so data would be now shuffled across for this join to materialize right uh, because it's not a broadcast join so data would be shuffled into to perform the sort merge join right and then further the sorting is also performed once the data is already shuffled and then eventually if you see here the sort merge join is called and it has taken some good amount of time uh, but the important point that we're trying to highlight that this stage of exchange has coming to the between the shuffling has uh, is not avoided here now the same same kind of a join with same data let's try to apply the concept of bucketing here so same data but this time we have tried to cut them into buckets of four on the column IDs and then we did the sort on the same and save this at bucket uh, tables so see this syntax this is how you can uh, create the buckets for the data frames right when you're trying to write it to a bucket by uh, while on the other hand uh, while creating a table we can use a clustered by uh, command to cut into the buckets sort by similarly for the another table as well we have applied bucket by we have tried to create four buckets right and uh, if, if I try to run this one if I try to run this one you know and look at the query plan for this particular one this is a query plan a SQL query plan for bucketed tables and if you see here 
there's no stage of exchange has come in between if you see here a little more details here you see the 32 files are read for each of the two tables involved in the join right and this has happened because n cross m the number of partitions are 8 and the number of buckets we have created is 4 so 8 cross 4 32 part files that needs to be read from the disk and that's those files are read here right then uh, sorting other things has happened if you see there's no data is moved for sorting zero bytes because it's already pre-sorted and pre uh, the shuffling has already done this pre-shuffle data so if you see no exchange has come into the data uh, no exchange has come into the picture right the sort merge join is performed and uh, no shuffling has happened in this scenario where we use the concept of bucketing big performance uh, boost right and uh, one interesting thing I want to show see when we have uh, divided this a particular data frame which all which already has uh, had eight partitions in, into furthermore four buckets this is how this is stored under the hood you see these two tables bucketed tables that we have you see B zero 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 so each partitions I have four flavors of four part files right for one I have four part files for zero 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 one partition zero zero to this like this so total I have zero seven from zero zero so eight partitions uh, four buckets to each so total number of files data files that I have is 32 that is what read uh, as we have seen on the spark UI so guys looking at bucketing once again want to iterate it's a very comprehensive and a very useful optimization technique the only thing we'll have to make sure is that we choose the co bucket column and the number of buckets very wisely so that we can get the right type of enhancements uh, during the joins. So guys, that's it in this particular video. Keep learning. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.